Marriages between Jews and German citizens, or those of similar blood, are forbidden. Elspeth's story begins in 1933. The Nazis had swept to power. Their stormtroopers were now protected by the government, and one of their favorite excesses, the persecution of Germany's Jews, was now government policy. There were arrests, beatings. Stormtroopers urged people not to shop in Jewish stores. German High Command is to encircle, simultaneously attack and destroy the large Polish army concentrated within the wide curve which the river Vistula forms in the centre of Poland. This is to be achieved by two army groups moving from the north and south. For many months, the occupiers considered a project to create a Jewish ghetto in Warsaw, including its plan and location. In the end, it was decided to create a ghetto in the very heart of this metropolis. Work had begun on construction of the wall. The Jewish masons, guarded by German soldiers, laid brick after brick. On October the 2nd, 1940, the governor of the Warsaw district signed a decree declaring the creation of a Jewish residential district. The Jewish ghetto was officially founded this day. The Jews were forbidden from leaving its borders, delimited by certain streets. A rumour circulated that Vronia Street, rather than Jelazna, was to be the border and that Chienna was under threat. People ran to and fro in confusion. The day the ghetto was sealed off was terrible. People did not yet know this was going to happen and the news came as a shock. In July 1941, Hermann Goering, Hitler's second in command, authorized all necessary preparations for the final solution of the Jewish question in the European territory under German control. As German military forces advanced, mobile killing squads advanced with them. The German army, military SS, and German police units took an active part in authorized mass murders. The Germans and their accomplices rounded up the victims, drove them on foot or in trucks to a killing site, often made them remove their clothes, and shot them. Participants in the murders included local collaborators, especially police, in Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Ukraine, and Belarus. The German killing squads and their auxiliaries murdered at least two million Jewish men, women, and children in mass shooting operations. Back in Germany, SS and police deported the remaining Jews to the occupied Eastern territories. In German-occupied Warsaw, the walled ghetto that German Jews entered as newcomers in 1942 was already a place of mass suffering due to terrible overcrowding, lack of sanitation, disease, and starvation imposed by the Germans. Despite all efforts of the imprisoned Jews to find ways of surviving and sustaining their communities, those conditions increasingly led to death 
for scores of thousands. Most vulnerable were the orphaned children. Originally, German occupation authorities established ghettos to concentrate Jews and separate them from the non-Jewish population. Later in the war, many ghettos served as staging grounds for the transportation of Jews to the east, euphemistically called resettlement by the Germans, who promised their captives better conditions and opportunities to work. People endured unimaginable suffering on journeys that lasted days without food, water, or toilet facilities. Many of the weak, the young, and the elderly died before reaching the destination. The Germans and their collaborators deported roughly 2.7 million Jews and others to killing centers in German-occupied Poland. At the largest of the camps, Auschwitz-Birkenau, transports arrived from all across Europe. A rare surviving witness to the horrors of the Holocaust. Ivan Martinushkin was a young soldier in the Soviet army that liberated the Nazi death camp at Auschwitz 65 years ago. The memory is still fresh in his mind. We saw emaciated, tortured, impoverished people. Those were the people I first encountered. We could tell from their eyes that they were happy to be saved from this hell. Happy that now they weren't threatened by death in the crematorium. Happy to be free. And we had the feeling of doing a good deed, liberating these people from this hell. As the Soviets approached the Auschwitz concentration camp complex in mid-January 1945, Nazi SS officers forced nearly 60,000 prisoners to march west. Around 7,000 others, too weak or sick to move, stayed behind. In total, historians say more than one million Jews, gypsies, Soviet POWs, and Poles were murdered there. Martinushkin says Auschwitz was just one of many prison camps he liberated as the Soviet army marched through Ukraine and Poland, pushing back Nazi forces. But at the time, he says he wasn't emotional, just focused on fighting the war. No matter how miserable and tragic it all was, we are a fighting military troop. I am a soldier. I can't give in to feelings every single time. But what did I feel when I saw these people in the camp? I felt compassion and pity understanding how these people's fate unfolded, because I could have ended up in the same situation. In the days leading up to the liberation of Auschwitz, Martinushkin says a few hundred of his comrades were killed. In all, some 600,000 Soviet soldiers died liberating Poland from the Nazis. Martinushkin believes people have forgotten the point of the war. The life of entire peoples were put at stake. They were supposed to wipe out Jews, Slavs, the Russian civilization, their culture and everything. This was what encompassed the Nazi new order. And the camp at Auschwitz is a sinister symbol that reminds people what awaited mankind. This is what the victory of the Soviet Red Army with its allies over fascism means. But Martinushkin doesn't consider himself a hero. He says he was just doing his job. The anniversary of the liberation of the Dachau Nazi concentration camp in Germany is being marked. It was on April the 29th in 1945 that the horrors at the camp were discovered just a week before the end of the Second World War. The gate bearing the Nazi slogan, Work Sets You Free, is a well-known feature at the site. This was the first concentration camp set up by the Nazis in 1933. Involved in the liberation were two divisions of the US 7th Army and the 20th Armoured Division. <laughs> 